It was all over our local Miami news outlets last week when the city of Miami Beach ordered the evacuation of the 51-year-old Port Royal condominium on the same street just 20 blocks south from the now infamous Champlain Tower South condo collapse from 2021, which took 98 lives. And we have been following that collapse and the resulting investigation with frequent updates for you. Hopefully you've been following us as we bring you these engineering investigation updates. But this new Port Royal condo is located at 6969 Collins Avenue, just 1.3 miles south of the Miami condo collapse site in Surfside, Florida. The evacuation was sparked by an engineering report sent into the city of Miami Beach building inspectors by the engineers working on the repairs to the building. So today I'm going to show you some photographic evidence of the damage to this building and we will take a look at this engineering report to see why this building is in danger of collapsing. And did the city of Miami Beach make the right decision to evacuate this building, putting 160 unit owners out on the street? So what is so different about this Port Royal condominium here in Miami Beach that it has to be evacuated? Why is this building going to collapse? And remember, this is only 1.3 miles up the road from the Champlain Towers condo collapse. And is this similar to the supposed early warning signs that we had with Champlain Towers condominium? before it collapsed just weeks later. Well, certainly it has some of the characteristics. I mean, we know in advance now that there's something wrong with this building. Now, don't think for a minute that the problems here at the Port Royal condo just all of a sudden surfaced out of nowhere. This building has actually been in the headlines before. So last year, as you can see right here, updated July 15th, see, right after the Champlain Towers condo collapse on June 24th, all of a sudden, numerous condos around Miami Beach started to become the focus of headlines as people were contacting the news and showing them pictures of their buildings falling apart and this was one of them here and so you can see they had sent a Miami building inspector out who photographed this and so let me show you uh, let's zoom in here on what was going on on the on the side of the building here where the concrete was spalling so here in the middle you can see all of the rebar rods and let's try to zoom in a little more here to show you more, more clearly. These are some good sized rebar rods. And so what happened here was they got rusty and as they rust, they expand. And as they expand, they start pushing out huge chunks of concrete like this off of the, the, the structure. And to me, at this point, you're no longer rated to whatever you were built at. Like, let's say it was built to 5,000 or 6,000 PSI. It's no longer rated at that. It can't possibly be rated at that at this point and not only that the rust likely continues another three or four feet beyond the damaged opening here so what you're seeing the actual damage is probably more like the circle that you see me making here with the mouse and i'm also going to show you some other pictures that were taken by marash markaj who is a resident and he says he's been complaining to the hoa for years so for example here's one picture he took last July. So this, this shoring was finally added to the building last July, days after the Champlain Towers collapse, because they, they obviously realized, hey, if they had cracks, we have cracks as well. And so they're actually going through their 50-year certification. They had already completed their 40-year recertification, and now they are doing the 50-year. And so they needed to add these shoring poles here to make sure that the building doesn't start crumbling. Now here's another shot that the building inspector took, and let me show you this here. I'm gonna zoom way into it. So this is going up the wall along a window on the outside of the condo, and again, here, look at this nice thick solid rebar rod that got exposed, and the crack goes all the way to here, but you can bet that the damage likely goes all the way to the top. Sometimes on buildings, a column might be right here at the edge of a window. So we don't know if this is a column or not. And if it is, it's probably a structural issue now, and this is no longer rated to hold the weight that it was designed to hold. Now, what if this is just a wall and this is a load-bearing exterior wall? Then you're looking at the same type of issue. Although a wall, I would think, would be a little bit stronger than just a, a spindly column would be. But either way, neither of these two cases is good. Looking at more photographs that Marash took down in the garage, you can see, you know, just like Champlain Towers, the common thread here is water seeping up, but it looks like a lot of dirt too. So I don't know if dirt either settled down there or if it bubbled up or percolated up from underneath. Next, take a look at this photo he provided here of one of the beams. I don't know if this is that main beam that the engineers talked about last week that had increased cracking and half inch displacement. But if you look at these cracks, uh, this beam, in my opinion, is no longer acting as a beam because it's almost separate 
separated from itself. And so it can't support the building on its own anymore, in my opinion. And also, if you look at it because of the cracks, this beam is now in tension. And as you know, concrete in tension is not strong. It is stronger in compression, not in tension. Look at these other pictures he got of the massive spalling taking place on the ceiling down on the garage there. And like here on the floor, you can see this massive chunk of concrete that fell off. And it looks like nobody even picked it up, cleaned it up, or was even bothered by it. And this reminds me a lot of the video I shot. If you saw my video from August of last year, when I showed you inside the garage of the Fort Lauderdale Marriott Harbor Beach Resort. What is this, man? Oh my gosh. Look at this, this is all fresh. This just fell from up above. Looks like it just came down in a big chunk and shattered here. And I sent a memo to their manager and never even got a response. This is what we call normalization of deviance. I'll put a link to that video down in the video description below for you so you can see it. Make sure you check out all the other videos I linked to down below. I want to show you something else real quick before I show you the photos from the engineering report. But what I think it really is closer to here is the FIU bridge collapse that we had back here in 2018 where six people lost their lives. What came out on the news in the days following this FIU pedestrian bridge collapse engineering disaster was that during the placement of the initial segment of the bridge onto the pylons on March 10th, five days before the collapse, the contractor noticed minor hairline cracking like you see here in these photos. But then what happened after a couple of days, the cracks started to get bigger and bigger and they took more pictures and notified the engineers of record, but the engineers were ignoring it which was just a sheer sign of arrogance. So this foolish and preventable engineering disaster at the FIU bridge collapse taught us one thing here, not to ignore those tiny little warning signs. Don't ever ignore those tiny little cracks, those hairline cracks that start growing and become quarter inch and half inch and then one inch. Because when you ignore those early warning signs, we all know what happens, folks. Your precious designs start collapsing and they start taking lives with them. They had an old saying when I was in engineering school, in my very first week of engineering school, our professor told us, if you ever design a bridge that fails, you'd better be under it when it does. And they showed us the now famous Tacoma Narrows Bridge collapse as a lesson. Okay, now I happen to have a PDF file of that inspection report from October 27th, just a, about a week ago. And I'm going to show you in here exactly what it was the engineers said that caused the evacuation of the building. So they mentioned here around the beginning of the year or so, they inspected the building and found areas to be repaired. Okay. And they went to go and do those repairs. Looks like about the beginning of September right here. But it says here, right here, during this week inspections, we noticed that one of the main beams in the garage had experienced a structural deflection of approximately one half inch. This ties right in directly of those photos I just showed you from the FIU bridge collapse. Same thing. These engineers were smart. They saw that what was hairline cracks weeks ago has now turned into a half inch and they're very concerned about that and rightly so because who knows whether that beam is even a beam anymore at this point. They say here the existing crack that was marked for repair had extended considerably and so they don't have the original calculations but from their observations they believe that this and the other beams in the third floor garage might support an entire building structure so therefore they've decided along with the shoring company to take additional precautions so in order to do this and add all of the shoring they want everybody out of the building the problem we are seeing is that the weight load of the building is now being taken up by all of the other beams instead and so they're now being asked to handle a load that they were not designed to and you got to keep in mind these beams may be already derated anyhow, making them even more crippled than when they were first designed. So that's why they decided to evacuate this building. Let's take a look at the pictures. Okay, so looking at the photos here, maybe zoom in a little bit. These are some pictures that were taken at the bottom of the wall on the south side of the building. So it's right next to the parking lot. And look, you can see just chunks are falling off here. This wall is ready to crumble. When you see concrete shooting out this way, and I don't even see any rebar, this says to me there's some major shifting going on here and it looks like there wasn't even a whole lot of mortar in there i'm not sure 
if there was supposed to be any in there, but this doesn't look right to me. Okay, these are two more photos that the engineers took, and this one is the really shocking one here too. So apparently there's a conduit and a, and a cutout in the slab floor where some of the electrical conduits go up, but it was we try to zoom in on this a little, get a little bigger, you can see that water has been dripping down for some considerable amount of time, and this looks like active water droplets right now dripping down as we speak. So it's dripping down this raceway, or they call it an electrical gutter, either way. Uh, but you can see on the zoomed out shot over here on the right hand side where this is in relation to everything. And some of the water has even gotten onto this massive pipe here, and you can see the green corrosion running down. What I don't know is has any water made it inside any of these cabinets or did it just drip down the front onto the floor? Either way, that's not a good sign. You should never have any kind of water able to penetrate like that. And yeah, these are really crappy photos actually. This one here looks like it might have been shot with an Apple iPhone 1 or something. I mean, what is all of this nonsense here? They've got some poles here around. This here is a drop panel off the ceiling, which means it looks like this garage was built a little better than the Champlain Towers, which had no drop panels. And you remember I did that video last year showing you four things that could have prevented the collapse of the Champlain Towers. And I said, this could have been one of them here. In addition to this doesn't have it either, but caps at the top of the column right here would have also, I think, helped prevent it. And then here over in the corner on the, on the probably up against one of the, the walls. Not only is you see, do you see spalling here going up the wall in several spots, but look at this crack running up this. Now, I don't know if this is a chase or if it's a miniature column or what it is, but the crack seems to be running all the way up. And I believe this is another crack over here on the wall. So you're just seeing cracks all over the place. And then look, if you zoom in closer, you can see over here, this area here looks like another one of these hourglass shapes that's ready to pop off of the wall. See right here, like this rebar here. This is is going to pop off before long. So these are the photos that they supplied here. I don't see why they didn't show any of the pictures of the displacement. So if you're noting up here that you saw a half inch deflection, I don't know why in the world they didn't show that in the photographs here, but at least they know it's there. They filed with the city and the city went ahead and filed the evacuation order. And now you know why I think that this Port Royal condominium in Miami Beach would collapse if they didn't put up any of these additional shoring poles, which they said should take about 10 days. After that time, they can start making the repairs that they need to make to keep this building standing on its own. So again, below in the video description, I will put a link for you to all of the other videos that we've done on this topic here on the Champlain Towers. And make sure you watch this video here, which is the last one we did on the Champlain Towers condo collapse. Thanks so much for joining us tonight, and we'll see you on the next one.